Hey again, guys. So it's Friday night. I think you guys know what I do on Friday night. Time to go to happy hour. And I think you guys know what I like to do before I go to happy hour. I like to look at some baseball cards. Got a bunch of stuff I've been gathering um, for the last uh, week or two. And I had taken some cards out of a display and replaced them. And I never had an opportunity to show you those. So I figured I'll show you those uh, as well. First... And I don't understand how this ever happened because uh, in 1981, it was the first year I sent away for tops for the complete box set. It was the first time I ever did that. And I got it and I remember how disappointed I was. I was so excited to get it, but when I opened it, it was like they were all in this box, nice and tight. I couldn't really see them. There was nothing to chase. I already had the complete set. Uh, but for whatever reason, when I put the set together in my binder, I must have uh, traded some away or flipped some. I, I don't know what happened, but I was missing uh, four cards. So I went out and uh, bought those four cards to complete my 81 top set. And, you know, these cards have a lot of nostalgic value to me. I love that set. I got this 1952. This is a, these decals of uh, Ralph Kiner. I've never had one of these. I've seen them. Uh, did not realize how large they were. I thought they were smaller, but these are pretty cool. And I got a sportscaster card of Arnold Palmer. He doesn't have really many cards from his playing days. These were the first cards I believe ever issued of him. And I showed you guys a while back, my ball blew up. I had a golf ball signed by him. You know, I grew up near his hometown. We had access to him. Uh, I used to play golf at his country club. Got stuck in a rain delay with him one time. And I got, a, got him to sign an autographed ball for me. And it was a Bellotta ball. And I looked over one day and it, it had just it kind of exploded. Uh, it shows you how soft those... Those golf balls were, those old balladas. Um, so I was kind of disappointed in that, but I, I picked up this nice autograph from him. My mother had gotten me uh, an autograph photo from him, and I have uh, his book that's uh, uh, signed as well. We just had, he was such a gracious man, so easily approachable. He would just bop around the country club and talk to everybody, invite everybody back to his house, um, so that was, it was sad for me to lose that, uh, that autograph ball. I still kept the, the portion that exists. <laughs> I have this cool, um, this is a cool subset. These pop-ups of, uh, Joe Namath I have several of these, but this is the, the most desired one in, in, in that set. What year are these from? 67? I forget. Great cards, though. Tough to find in uh, top condition. This one's just spectacular. And I showed you, I've been getting up uh, Dave Parker rookies. Well, I did not have an Opeachy version. So I had to get an Opeachy version. And I love the Opeachies because they have a little bit of a rough cut. And I love that. And a little bit of a different back. Just a brighter, brighter back on those. But it's a nice, nice example of an Opeachy. Surface is real clean, corners are nice, just a little off center. And like I said, a little bit of a rough cut, which I like. And got this Hostess Dave Parker. Love me the Hostess cards. And how great is this 1951 Bowman Johnny Sane? Spawn and Sane, pray for rain, baby. And we have this Larry Benton, 1933 Gowdy. Always add to this set when I can. And I collect miscut cards, if you didn't know. And I got this great Alex Johnson. Nineteen, what is it, 54 Red Heart? Warren Spawn. My dad used to tell me he could hit while he was still in bed. 
That's Smokey Burgess, 1951 Bowman. I believe that's his rookie card. Smokey Burgess. And one of the O'Brien brothers. Their most famous card is 1954 Tops. It's the only main card that includes two players, and they included these, these twin brothers. There was Johnny O'Brien and Ed O'Brien. Here's the Ed in the 53 Tops. If it wasn't for Mario Mendoza, they might have named that line after the O'Brien brothers. <laughs> Here's a 1960 Harry Simpson. And a card I had laying around that I'm reorganizing, uh, an old Babe Diedrichson card. And I have the Jesse Owens in this too. But she was, hey, she might be the best all-around female athlete of all time. She was like a female Jim Thorpe and a fantastic early golfer on the LPGA Tour. And speaking of LPGA, I have this Laura Baugh, sportscaster, and Nancy Lopez. And I guess if you're a baseball collector, you could probably still collect Nancy Lopez if you don't do golf because she was married to Ray Knight. I have here a Patrick Laleem. I think this is a rookie card. One of those, uh, I forget what you call them, kind of a, uh, what do they call that? Acetate or something? Kind of see-through card. And I was a fan of his. He, um, when he came up, and I don't know if he still holds this record, but he held the record for the most consecutive wins to start his career with 15. He had broken Ken Dryden's record, and there was another guy I'm, I'm not familiar with. Um, he also uh, shared that record with Ken Dryden, I guess. And it was interesting because the Pittsburgh Penguin held the most consecutive wins by a rookie in hockey for, the, for the, him. And then um, uh, the last two quarterbacks to have the most consecutive wins to start a career by, uh, by a, a quarterback, by a rookie quarterback, were also Steelers. Ben Roethlisberger holds that record, and uh, he broke a former Steeler, Mike Krujak. So I was a fan of his. And he also, uh, he had another record that I believe he tied. I watched the game. It was in the Stanley Cup playoffs. I think it was the most periods without giving up a goal. And there was like something like one or two minutes left in the game and somebody snuck a goal by him. So he didn't break the record. But I believe he tied it. But that was an exciting game to watch. I couldn't believe it at the very end. One of my favorite cards is just a classic from the era. Man, I had this uh, up on my wall, but Bo Jackson. And here's an 86 uh, rookie card. What is this? Uh, update, I believe, or traded. And a 85 Donnie Baseball Opeachy. Just love the cut of the Opeachies. I'm addicted to them. Here's a 1953 Bowman color, Vic Wirtz. Of course, he hit the ball that Willie Mays caught over his shoulder in the 1954 World Series, that famous catch and throw. 1952 Robin Roberts. 52 Bowman Warren Spawn. This is a spectacular card. 52 Don Newcomb. Got this um, King B, Bo Jackson. Used to love to get these discs. You get that beef jerky and put it in your, your lip as a kid and pretend you were chewing. Of course, I grew up in the country. We started chewing in like the third grade. And the greatest ears in baseball history, 1955 tops Don Mossy. Nineteen fifty-two Vernon Law, good hitting pitcher, won a lot of games on really bad teams. 
really good pitcher. I think he's a Mormon. He became a, I think he was a Mormon deacon too. And a 1951 Bowman, Preacher Row. Most of these cards I've had since I was a little kid. These last ones I've shown you. This one too. This is a 1954 Bowman, Bob Feller. He does not get enough hobby love or baseball love. After Walter Johnson, he was probably, you know, made the most splash with how hard he threw. 1952, Ralph Kiner. And I remember how special this was for me to get, because this is the year that he became the only player in history to throw a no-hitter in a World Series. And that's a 1956, Don Larson. I always like to have a card of the year a player did something special. And here's a 56 Harry Simpson. Had to get Willie Starjo in the living set. Tim LaCastro, Stadium Club rookie. Speedster. And I got these, um, uh, well, here's a Walker Bueller rookie card. And I got these Burns cards. Man, he just, uh, I think he just set a record, or broke a record. Most uh, strikeouts without a walk, I believe. And that's what I have for you tonight. Hey, once again, thanks for watching.